Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday Night Live and my ceiling as per usual. There we go. That's a little better. I'll adjust this as we go as needed. Um, so for anyone watching this later on on replay, this is a live video. The whole point's for me to be able to chit chat with people, answer questions in a live setting, etc. If that is not your kind of video, please feel free to not watch. I have many videos that are just plain tutorials with no chit chat whatsoever. For everybody else, please say hi in the chat box. Let me know where you're watching from. Hey, Susan. And we're going to hopefully have some fun. Funsies. All right, there we go. I've got the live video pulled up. Hey, Barbie. Okay, so... Y'all might remember this is actually the vase from, hopefully I'm right, last Wednesday's live video. Hey Heather. Uh, so I figured I would show you guys how I would resin seal this and how I would finish up this project essentially. Hey, hey Veronica. Hey Jolene. All right, so let me just set up my second notch. Uh, what is notches? My second camera here, although I don't need it yet. I'm going to give people just like a second to get tuned in before I like really get started so that we don't get tons of repeat questions if possible. And I want to show you guys a close up of this. Uh, I do not have with me, unfortunately, actually, I thought about this a little too late, but I don't have the canvas hey Rhonda hey Linda uh, the canvas that I did the hair dryer and tree ring on in the studio here and it's pouring rain outside so I don't really want to <laughs> run to the house and grab it but if you follow me on Facebook I'll actually be posting the full video for that one uh, right after this pretty much right after this live video so you guys will get to see that if you check it out there otherwise it'll be on YouTube shortly okay so here is the vase and I think this is just gorgeous so for anyone who wasn't here during the live I used all mixed media girl pouring paints and I used um, cause earth shimmer I used pearl white peachy coral some canary yellow and metallic mixed berry, also white. So here is the vase, and I did this through a strainer. And it is just gorgeous. I hope you can see that metallic shimmer from that pearl white and that, uh, mostly the pearl white and the metallic mixed berry in there. So pretty. Okay, so let me just get this, there's a cord in the way, sorry. Um, a question I often get is what do you do about the drips on the top? Now I don't usually have drips on the top, but sometimes I have these like little ones. So a really easy way to clean those off, let me just tilt this down a little bit, before getting started with the resin is a razor or an X-Acto knife. And you can literally just clean up the lip of this really, really easily. Let me scroll down a little more even. And I usually just go right along the top here and I will just create a nice, ideally even line here. Sorry, I only speak English. If anyone else wants to translate, go for it. Otherwise, please watch any of my regular tutorials that have the translate button on them which should be any video besides a live video because I can't translate a live video <laughs> all right <laughs> Veronica are you here so that cuts a nice clean line here and then you can just kind of scrape off any additional okay just keep an eye out Hey Jennifer. So I'll usually just clean up any 
additional paint that got a little bit inside the lip here. You can use your nail or razor as needed, or the X-Acto knife, I mean, either one. So it's really, really simple if you want to get a super clean top. Hey, Brandy, of your vase there. And that's really all there is to that. Now we will mix up our resin. Probably gonna have to adjust this back a little bit here. Oh, Brandy, I'm so excited about next month. It seems so far away, yet also so close. All right. I'm just gonna move a couple things to the side here. There we go. Okay. And I'll adjust the camera as I go as needed. For right now, this should work. Uh, you might be able to hear, but I do have my heater on, and that's because it is a very cold and rainy day, and I'm preheating my resin. Now, to seal this vase, I only need a couple of ounces. However, very, very rarely do I do only one project at a time, especially when it comes to resin, because it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to repeatedly mix up resin. So... I actually have another project that I literally just need to pour resin into and it's done. So I'm gonna mix up resin for both. And for my other project, I need probably at least eight ounces. Um, but I think I'm gonna mix 10 just in case. So I'll mix up 12 ounces total. Thank you, Barbie. Um, I'm using Mixed Media Girl Artist Resin. And I stuck it in front of my heater for about 15 minutes. Hopefully it's not too long. Um, then I start off with part B because it is the thinner of the two and therefore uh, makes it easier to mix it fully together because the thicker one tends to stick to the side of the cup. So you can probably see through the camera, but this part A is definitely thicker. So six ounces of each, equal parts here. <laughs> and then we're going to stir this for a good, great Jennifer, a good three to four minutes. Hey, Terry, thank you so much. Yes, we are officially live here. Now, here's a really important thing is while you're stirring it, make sure you repeatedly scrape the sides and scrape the bottom of your cup. Even if you stir it for 20 minutes, if you don't scrape the sides and the bottom of your cup, you will probably end up with your resin not being fully mixed. Okay, so just stir for three to four minutes, scrape the sides and the bottom of your cup, preheat it if needed, and make sure you are mixing equal parts A and B. Hey, Glenda. Who else is here live for the first time? And Helen, if you scroll back through my videos, this was a live video from last week. So you can see it there. Or you can also just search through my videos, Mixed Media Girl Strainer, and I have a couple videos of doing a strainer on a vase, okay? Hello, Pamela. I've got a few newbies. Make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button. I'm super, super close to 5,000, or 5,000. <laughs> I'm super, super close to 500,000 subscribers. And as soon as we hit that mark, uh, we're gonna do a giveaway. I'm not exactly sure what yet, I'll have to decide that, but that giveaway will go live probably early next week, okay guys? And for all of you newbies here, I do go live every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. So if you wanna set your calendars to join me, I would love that. All right, this is about mixed. Just gonna give it another minute or two. Scrape the sides and the bottom a couple more times. I know, right, Veronica, is not that exciting? So hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. If you guys really want some bonus points, uh, share one of your favorite videos later. <laughs> Everything is appreciated. 
Aw, thanks, Margie. All right. I'd rather mix it a little bit extra than not quite enough. Just FYI, so. I know, right? Super exciting. No, I do not pre-resin it. If I'm doing an acrylic pour, it's just acrylic pour paint. Let that dry and then resin it. If I'm doing a resin vase, then it's going to be all resin, no pouring paint. And I will often start off with a, clo a coat of clear resin uh, just to start helping my colors flow. But yeah, you don't ever want to mix acrylic pouring paint and resin wet. Never, never. All right. So a key thing with resin as well is you don't want to leave a large amount in a bucket like this. So since I only need two ounces for my vase, I'm actually going to pour it into that project I was mentioning that I just need clear resin in. And so I'll show you guys. Also give you a little sneak peek of a video coming up also. This is one I did on a Facebook Live, a tray. Um, what do you mean by ingredients? This is just mixed media girl artist resin. Those are the ingredients. It's that's all it is. I'm just gonna record this separately. Anyways, this is a gorgeous beach resin tray. I love it. And I just need to put the top clear coat on it. And then it is done. Simple and fun project. And once again, the full video will be out relatively soon. Hopefully within the, probably by Friday. We'll see, okay. <laughs> so here I'm literally just gonna pour clear. You can add um, a sparkle to this if you want, actually. I am gonna add a tiny, 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 thank you, Linda, tiny, tiny, tiny bit of gold metallic dust, because that will go well with the vase as well. Um, now, when I say tiny, I do mean tiny, like I'm gonna add a couple sp sparkles, and that's it. A little bit goes a long way, and I found it's best to do this with a stick so that you don't overdo it. Hopefully you guys can see my stick there. It's just gonna give it a little tiny sparkle. You don't wanna overdo it, it can really take over. Nope, it's all the same. Resin comes in two parts, um, generally speaking. So a part A and a part B, these have to be mixed together for it to work. One is the resin, one is the hardener. So it's all the same resin. It's just two parts of it that have to be mixed together to cause that chemical reaction, which allows it to cure. All right, so I'm gonna pour this out into here and I'm gonna take my stick and make sure that I get it pushed all the way to the edges. There's nothing worse than mixing, missing a little spot on your top coat there. And then for anyone new to resin, um, it takes about 24 hours to cure. So after about 24 hours, I can take it out of this mold, but the actual full, full cure time, which means the point where it gets to the hardest is actually about 30 days. So you still want to be pretty gentle with it for about 30 days. I'm going to add a little more. Okay. I think we pretty much got all our spots filled. Now this is in a silicone mold and oops, one little spot over here. In a silicone mold, you do not want to use a torch. It can actually damage the mold. So to get rid of any air bubbles in the resin, I use 91% isopropyl alcohol. And that way you won't damage the mold. If you'd like, you can also use a heat gun. 
just not a torch. A torch is literally just direct fire. A heat gun is heat with air, so it's not the same. Um, you can damage it still with a heat gun, but it takes a lot, <laughs> okay? Um, all right, Frida said, what brand of resin does not yellow? So there's no brand of resin that will not yellow over time. They all will, but you can absolutely get a resin that has maximum UV protection like this one does, which means as long as it's not kept in the sunlight, it's going to take a very long time to yellow, like years, many years. So um, also a lot of times when resin yellows, it's actually the colorants, not the resin itself. So that's kind of a, a note. And yes, you could use it to make a table. Um, Jennifer, are you using a torch with your molds? Because that's generally the only reason that it will stick. All right, let's get on to our vase. Hey, Reggie, good to see you here. <clears throat> Love her. <laughs> yeah, I had to learn that the hard way, I'm not going to lie, multiple times. I ruined many, many silicone molds with a torch so all right um this is the foam that came with the cup turner as a note it's not a additionally purchased one but you can absolutely purchase other ones like oh actually i'm gonna use this other foam which is a little newer like this one this is one that i purchased uh it it's more squishy than this, and I got it from Amazon. It fits right into a, I actually cut it in half, and it fits right into a tumbler, and then it expands. So this is great for tumblers. But typically speaking, I use this one foam for pretty much everything. It works quite well. And I'll take it off of the cup turner, shove the foam down into there, it's not that easy to get out, but it's not that difficult. And then I put this on here. You need to make sure it's snug. If you have any looseness whatsoever, you have to put something else on there to tighten it. Otherwise, while it's rotating, it will fall off and you will be super sad. It happens. And then underneath here, I like to put a piece of silicone mat a piece of plastic, etc., to try to protect my cup turner. I'm not always the best with that, and I have some cup turners that are really kind of wonky because <laughs> they have such a buildup of resin. <laughs> so I learned that also after quite a while. Let me just adjust this slightly. I wanna see if I can, I'm gonna try to zoom in, close your eyes for a second. Okay, there we go. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. And we're now ready to rumble. Thank you. So I turn the cup turner on, starts spinning. And we're gonna apply the resin very slowly. If you do this slow enough and don't overdo it, you should not end up with any resin drips, actually. You should be able to keep it all on the base. However, if you're anything like me, you might be a little impatient and you dump a bunch out at, at one time. <laughs> um, but if you just take your time, put a little bit on at a time, you could even kind of put it on your glove first, then on the base. And we're just starting off with a nice, whoops, even coat here. And you want to make sure you get the entire thing covered, top to bottom. Thank you, Brandy. Love you. And remember, it really doesn't take a lot. You don't want to underdo it, but you really don't want to overdo it. If you put too much on there, it's just going to be a waste. It'll either all drip off or it can pool at the bottom, which is really a pain in the butt. So it's honestly better to do two coats than to overdo it, okay? So, 
Oh, I totally missed what you said, Rhonda. I'll have to go back and look at my comments again later. All right, once I've got pretty much full coverage, which it looks like I do, I'll hold on to the cup turner because otherwise it can move. And then I will go section by section, starting at the bottom and going all the way to the top. And this is going to ensure that I did not miss any spots. And you wanna do this for at least one full rotation, if not two. So usually just like pick a spot on your vase that you can keep an eye on as it rotates. And there you go. Then I'll make sure I got the bottom completely. And then I will keep my finger here at the top also for a full rotation. And one more thing that I like to do <laughs> awesome, Rhonda. Can't wait to see. Oh, a steampunk pyramid. Cool. Yeah, I definitely can't wait to see that. So one more thing I like to do is I actually like to on my vase, only on a vase, not on a tumbler or anything else, um, I like to go inside the lip here and hold my finger there for a full rotation. And I do this because A, you're not drinking out of this, so we're not worried about any kind of food safety right now. B, it really is important to get a full, full coverage of all of your paint. And doing this just helps. It'll help to get a full bond to the, that glass vase. Because as you know, glass is nice and smooth. So having the resin actually wrap around the top like that will really help. So I keep my finger there for a full rotation. And then, last step, we gotta remove the air bubbles. Now, unlike in a silicone mold, I do not use isopropyl alcohol on a vase. And that is because it can cause pitting on a flat surface where there's not a lot of resin. It's not gonna cause pitting in your silicone mold because you have a bunch of resin in there. But on here, it can. So I do use my torch here. You could use a heat gun. I prefer a torch. I usually only use a heat gun for resin beaches, to be honest, but. So you're gonna just go quickly up and down. Make sure you get all the spots and don't forget the bottom. And there you go. What I like to do after this, Lisa, I'm not totally sure what you mean. Can you clarify? like what glass specifically, like I just did here. So it wouldn't be a problem with it if I just did it here. Um, I like to let it rotate a full time or two and make sure A, that it didn't miss any spots, B, that it didn't miss any air bubbles. You can use your torch one more time. Definitely don't overdo it because you don't want them, you don't want the resin. Whoop. Now we know it's a live video. Uh, I would not do the resin on the inside of the wine glass. No, I would only do it on the outside. Resin is incidental food safe, so you wouldn't wanna do anything where uh, your food might be touching it in any way, shape, or form, including anything that you're drinking. <laughs> I know, right, it's official. So that's just my recommendation, but take it as you will. I'm not the resin police, <laughs> so anyways, there you go. This will be dry tomorrow. I'm gonna let it rotate for a full, honestly not a full 24 hours. I almost never do 24 hours. Um, it'll be dry by the morning. Right now it's like 4.30 p.m. my time. So I'd say it ends up being more like 16, 18 hours. Even then though, especially since it's cold, I'm not gonna take it off the, the cup turner. I will turn it off once it's dry, but then I'm gonna let it cure for at least another few hours, if not another day, um, because I don't wanna get fingerprints on it taking it off of this, and there's no reason for me to take it off urgently. I have a few other cup turners. If I do need to use this cup turner, I 
would do that, I would just be very careful, but ideally you let it cure for at least 24 hours before taking it off of the foam. Okay, hopefully that makes sense, especially when it's cold. If it's hot, you don't have to worry nearly as much about it, but right now it's cold. It's cold in a lot of places, so give that resin just a little bit of extra time. Okay. All right, guys, that's actually all I have for today. Um, I did want to let you know that I just got the resin mystery boxes back in stock. So there's only four the last time I checked. It might be less now. Um, those are guaranteed to contain a half a gallon of resin, um, silicone molds, some uh, acrylic coaster pieces, and a bunch of really fun stuff. And the, what's in each box varies every time. Plus it comes with the full resin basics course, which is like $250 course. So it's really fun. I would check that out if you want. There you go, Veronica just got you the link. And there's only four or less left. So grab it now if you'd like. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for joining me. Check out Facebook in a little bit for that um, video from last week's live. And I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys.